Hello, this is Brother Kevin, and I'd like to uh, share with you some of the original videos that I made uh, several years back, and to share with you how God gave me the vision, and how you see that it hasn't really changed, but it was a seed, and God used that to blossom where Sultan and I are now. So please be blessed as we uh, share the Transformation Series. Hello, this is Brother Kevin again on the, our second video. And this particular video, I really want to get into the scriptures more because what I want you to do, what I want you to see is you're the compassion of Christ and the compassion of God. It's not going to be really an easy way to take a look at it, but I still want you to see it as it develops in the old. Now, as I said to you at the closing of the last video, we talked about how the apostles didn't have First Peter and Second Peter, but rather they had the, the law and they had the prophets and they had the Psalms. It was, that was basically their working place of which they shared, they shared the gospel. And uh, it's good to know that. And it's good to know that every believer should be able to see the everlasting covenant or the new co the new covenant right out of that old um, that old covenant writings of the prophets and the psalms because it's all there. And though I won't get into great length, I still want you to see just how wonderful our God is, how wonderful Jesus is. If I don't do nothing else in any of these videos, I want to exalt Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's get right into it. Um, in Exodus 20, you see my eyes glance up. I'm just basically taking a look at the scriptures so I don't have to worry about moving about. So in Exodus 20, 18 through 21, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. So when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said to Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, that his fear may be before your faces, that ye said not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. So this is a classic uh, episode because it shows that God's desires have never changed. God has always wanted to be intimate. He's always wanted to be close to his people. He's always wanted to have that special relationship. That's right. Every last person that's looking at this video, God wants you. God loves you. And even though the people saw God and had that opportunity because of fear and because of things that we'll be getting into, they just not, did not want to take the risk. All right, let's go on to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee, and they have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Now, I want you to listen to what the Lord says after this. In Deuteronomy 18, 15, here we go. It's going to start getting good here. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet, Jesus, from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Now I added the Jesus part, but I just want you to follow me. Like unto me, unto him shall you hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in horror in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from amongst their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now I want you to know that this is 
a pure manifestation. God says one of Christ's functions is going to be. That which in our heart that is afraid, that's afraid of God, that's afraid of holiness, that's afraid of this fire. Jesus is going to be now that mediator to come. He's going to be that prophet that will come. That's going to make the way. He's going to be the voice of God to reconcile the people. He's going to be the one that you won't have to be afraid of. He's going to be the one that's going to make a way. And so I want you to know that this part of the everlasting covenant or the new, or the new covenant is right here opening up in the old. Okay, now let's go on. We got some other interesting things to take a look at here. Um, Deuteronomy. 29 verses 3 and 4. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs, those great miracles, yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear this day. All the problems that we have as beings, as humans, it's in our heart. That's why I said we're not sinners because of what we do. We're sinners because of what we are in our heart. Or as the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. When we have problems, we have problems in our heart. Now, just going up the next chapter uh, in Deuteronomy, chapter 30. And the Lord God, thy God, will circumcise thine heart. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. So here's the Lord is prophesying in this verse the very need of the former. God's going to circumcise a heart. Of course, in days, years to come, Christ is going to come and make a way for this to happen. So I want you to know that it's the our heart issue. Someone said, you know, I'm trying as a Christian. I'm just not perfect. No, it's not a try thing. It's a heart thing. Let Jesus change the heart. Let Jesus come into the heart. And now we're talking about a good foundation of righteousness and love and peace and joy and integrity. Well, let's go fast forward a little bit to Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel 11, 19 says, I will give them one heart and will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. So here, I want you to recognize here, the Lord is still prophesying through the prophet Ezekiel, the new heart is to come. Now, I find that Ezekiel 36, 26, which I talked about in the last um, video, it's a little more specific and goes into a little more detail. So let's go over it. Ezekiel 36, 25 uh, through 27. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from your idols. I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit I will put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments to do them. And I will save you from all your uncleanness and will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that you receive no more reproach of famine amongst the heathen. Then you shall remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good. And you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Now Ezekiel is going into great detail. When the new covenant comes, when that time that Jesus provides in his administration, okay, Jesus is going to provide a way, not just providing the cross, not just becoming this matchless son of uh, lamb of God that, take it, that takes away the sins of the world, but he's going to provide in you newness of life. He's going to give you a new spirit. He's going to give you a new heart. He's going to take away or take out the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And then he's going to fill you with the spirit. And then he's going to call for financial blessing in your life. 
and material blessing in your life. And then you're going to have a spirit of brokenness. You're going to hate sin and hate what you did to God. You're going to be a broken, but yet a new person. As we said before in the Pauline writings, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You're going to be made brand new when you receive Jesus Christ. You're not going to have to fix your old life up because God can't use the old heart. He can't use the old life. He's going to give you a new one. He's going to give you a new heart. He's going to give you a new life. Well, anyway, I'll have to continue this on another video, but it really gets awesome. Okay, so we need to understand that the gospel is supernatural. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not joining a worldview. You're not getting a worldview. No, you are being transformed into a brand new person that Jesus Christ himself creates. And that's what makes your walk with God effective. Not you, but what Jesus does inside of you. Well, God bless you until we get to the third transformation video because I still believe that the gospel transformed and if you're seeking God if you're interested in Jesus Christ he's right there with you now call upon his name he'll answer you because you're the reason he died what a God what a Jesus God bless you love you much bye bye